Now then guys, how are you doing? I'm Craig and welcome to the channel. Now, if you are new to the channel, thank you very much for joining us on what is going to be my first major save of the FM22 cycle. Now, if you are here for the rebuilds, the rebuilds have not stopped. The rebuilds will be at 10 a.m. every Saturday. Don't you worry about that. But yes, we're doing the Home Nation Domination Challenge. Now, this is a tour across the British Isles. So we've got Northern Ireland, Wales, England and Scotland. And the aim is to win all of the Premier League titles from those nations and their major cup competitions as well. Well, as well as winning the Europa League and the Champions League throughout. Now, we have got 15 years to do that, and I'll discuss that in more detail. But if you have clicked on this to see these guys, then that's your first mistake. Your second mistake is you're probably not subbed. So get subbed, click the bell on, and give the video a like. Would mean a lot, as this one is going to be at least a 100 episode series. 100% are we going to surpass the 100 episodes on this one. So without further ado, then, let's get into episode one of Home Nation Domination. Right then guys, so what is it about? As you can see behind me, we've got the Home Nation Domination rules up. Now it is a mix of Lelugio's non-league to legend and Dr. Benji's glory hunter. So we're after all the trophies we can get, but we're also starting with that lowest Magido reputation as well. So we have got to work our way up, like that non-league to legend, but we are trying to win all the major silverware, like glory hunter. So I'm sure you can see where we're going with this. So let's go through the rules then. So as you can see, only clubs in the United Kingdom can be managed. No good going anywhere else. Obviously, it'd be just a waste of our time. I have got other nations loaded up, though, league-wise, because that'll increase our player pool and will give me the opportunity to scout further and hopefully bring in some more talent. The aim is to win the Premier League titles and the domestic cups. They must be won in all nations to complete the challenge, as well as the Europa League and the Champions League. Two extra ones there. Jobs offered by higher-reputation clubs must be accepted. Now, this is the kicker. I could be having an absolute fantastic time in Wales, being a top-five position, challenging for the title, and then a club from Scotland. Scotland, who's got an high reputation, could come and poach us, and I've got to leave the club. That offer must be accepted. I cannot shirk away from it. If a club has got the same reputation, it is my decision, but anything higher, I must accept. Manager status to be set to the lowest available to suit current level of experience. So as it stands, I am a Sunday league manager with zero experience and no coaching qualifications. So any team that's going to take a chance on me, you know, it's a real big punt with no experience at all. They get an absolute gem, let's put it that way. And I've got 15 years to complete the challenge. So 15 years to get all the way through. You know, I'm expecting to be tied down for three, four seasons trying to build up some reputation before I get the opportunity to move. It would be just nice to get a little bit of silverware ticked off before I end up moving. So when we look at the leagues that are currently loaded up, obviously I've got England, France, Germany, Republic of Ireland, Italy, Northern Ireland, Portugal, Scotland, Spain and Wales. Now that is just solely for the player pool. Like I said, I've got 47,000 players to choose from. Now nations that I can manage in are all of them in fairness, but like I say, we're only going for England, Northern Ireland, Scotland and Wales. And in those nations, we've got the Premier League, the Championship, League 1 and 2, the Vanarama National League and the Vanarama National League North and South in England. In Northern Ireland, we've got the Dance Bank Premiership as well as Love 41 Championship and their Premier Intermediate League. When we go to Scotland, I've got the Cinch Premiership, Championship, League 1 and League 2. And then going to Wales, JD Premier and the JD North and South. So plenty of leagues for me to get my teeth stuck into. And then looking at my profile, absolute shambles there. As you can see, my reputation is half a star and local. Coaching qualifications, none. My past playing experience as a Sunday league manager. But at 34 year old, I've got time on my side. Reputation wise, like I say, what is he classed at? 5% reputation. Everything else, 50%. My media handling, tactical consistency and hands-on approach, 50%. That will change, no doubt, as we work our way through this save. But when we look at my attributes... Not too much going on. Attacking two, mental three, determination two, and people management and motivation both two. That is it. Everything else set to one. That is not good to look at, let's be honest. But what about the job opportunities? So when we go to the job centre then, Man United, let's get ourselves to Man United. Easy peasy, eh? They'll take a chance. I mean, they took a chance on Solskjaer, so why not give us a go? But when we're looking at the lower league teams, we've got Druids from Wales, Limavadi United from Northern Ireland, Curzon Ashton in the Vanarama National League North, opportunity for us there in England. Then we've got Barnett in the Vanarama National League. I think Barnett may be a step too far, if I'm completely honest. I think we're really looking at managing in the pits of those leagues at the minute. I don't think we're going to get anything higher than the bottom league. However, Druids would be a decent shout as they're already in the Welsh Premier League. So looking at it, we wouldn't even have to drop into the league below. The north or south of Wales, you know, 
be ideal if you just got into the Premier there. So what we're going to do then is I'm going to start applying for some of these jobs and I'll come back when I've been invited to some interviews. Right, so straight off the bat, Druids and Kurz Nashton have both offered me the opportunity. I've applied for Druids, Lima Vardy and Kurz Nashton. I don't think I've really got any opportunity anywhere else. So let's go with the Druids interview. Let's attend that. So the board are pleased that you have taken the time to attend today. It's great to be here. Let's go. Can you explain why you appear to be in the running for a few jobs? Des Williams, not messing about. Going straight for the jugular. I'm just trying to forge ahead with my career. I think that's the way to go. If you emerge as a successful candidate, you'll be expected to adhere to the club's vision for the future. So club culture-wise, then they want us to use the club's youth system. Why not? Five-year plan. Obviously, is to be financially sound by working within the wage budget. But like the tempting thing for this is, is we're going straight into the top tier of Welsh football. Football, and you only expect a mid-table finish as well as reaching the quarter-final of the Welsh Cup and then just to be recognised as the best of the rest. I think it's an exciting vision. I think that's the way to go with it. If hired, we would expect you to finish in a mid-table position. Do you think you could do better than that? And my, my options here... If given the job, I think I could do much better than expecting and challenge for the Europa Conference League or I think we could finish in a top half finish. I'm going to go for the Europa Conference League one. Why not? If I were willing to provide you with a transfer budget of just under £2,000. Wow, as well done there. That's a... Uh do a lot that is you know we're really going to be to rebuild the squad with that i think the proposed transfer budget is realistic have i got anything else you want to add no so that is it so that's the first interview down they're going to be in touch with me in due course i'll get this cursed national interview out the way let's we don't need to see that again it'll just be the same answers and we'll see if limavadi united come in as well and hopefully we get a couple of job offers and we'll be able to talk through my decision making Right, so I've had two job offers already. Kurz Nashton have come in and so have Druids. Now, Druids, I've just delayed. They are the team out of the two that I would much prefer to go to. As, like I say, starting that Welsh Premier League straight away, we can get in there, couple of seasons, hopefully build it up. Look at maybe season three, actually winning something and then jump and ship as quickly as possible. I think with Kurz Nashton, it's more of a, let's get myself through a couple of seasons, build up my reputation, and then I could end up going to Wales where I've basically just wasted two years. Now, I'm not saying it's a waste. Naturally, Actually, I'd build up my reputation, but I think I could do that by doing some good stuff in Wales. So, Druids have come in with £190 a week offered to take me to The Rock. What a place, The Rock. But then, Curse Nashton also coming in, wage budget, 4.4k, and I'm being offered £525 a week to go there. So, naturally, obviously, the money is very tempting. But when I look at it then, so Curse Nashton... When we look at in the league, what is their expectation? So from the season preview then, they're expected a 19th place finish, 50-1 to 1 to win the league. So they're not expecting much out of them. And when we look at their history, you know, they've been in the Vanarama North for quite a while now. So since 2015, they've been in there and they've basically languished around the bottom half of the table. When we look at their key players then, Dominic Knowles is their captain. And he's all right, striker. 13 finishing, 12 composure. You can't expect too much down this level. 29-year-old, what's he like for goal scoring? Seven goals last season for them after he joined on three from Boston United. He got 12 goals there. What about their key player? Adam Thomas, winger. Okay, acceleration and pace, 11. Dribbling, 11. Crossing, 9. Again, he's all-rounded. He can play on both sides, so he's not a bad player. But then we're looking at Druids in the Camry Premier. So when we look at it, they're expected a ninth place finish here, 200 to 1 to win the league. And TNS are an absolute menace on the Welsh game. They really are. TNS run away with it every season. Seeing that though, Connors Key have won the last two Premier League titles. So, and they're down in 13 to 2. So Connors Key are probably the team to watch. When we look at the history, as you can see, the past winners, Connors Key win the last two. TNS runners up and Baller in third place. Nothing there for the Druids, let's put it that way. But TNS have basically had. Eight years of dominance before Connors Key just come out of nowhere and have taken it away from them. So looking at the Druids then, let's have a look at their players. So their captain is Michael Jones, 33-year-old goalkeeper, and he's not very good at all. No disrespect, Pablo. Jeez Louise, not very good at all. And he's been there, and he's more or less been ever-present season after season as well. He's been there, what, now five years, going into his six years. But yeah, he's uh, not great. My key player is Jacob Lever. Again, he's not very good. Mark and 11, heading and tackling, both under 10. Physically, he's okay. Mentally, he's got a couple of his determination, 15, decision-making, 14. But yeah, 28-year-old, you know, he's now in his prime, apparently, and he's a star player. He come to us from Australia as well. But he is, he's an English player, so right, fair enough. And then we might as well just have a look at the hot prospects. So Brandon Lockett, 
is also equally as poor as everybody else at the club. So we've got a big challenge here at Druids, haven't we? Let's be honest. But I keep getting pulled in by the fact that we're going to be in the Welsh Premier League. And I can just ply my trade here and hopefully get something out of it. What's saying I don't have a couple of good seasons and then I get a job at TNS or Connors Key? You know, so I'm thinking for me out of those two clubs, when we look at the other team that was available... So Limavadi United, they haven't even offered me a job interview yet, but they are playing in the bottom league of Northern Ireland, so they're playing in the Premier Intermediate League. And when we look at these guys, so season preview then, they're expecting the third place finisher, they're expecting them to push for a promotion this season. But again, the temptation of managing in a top tier of Wales, rather than the Vanarama North or in this Intermediate League in Northern Ireland, is going to be the puller. So what I think we're going to do is we're going to take this job at Druids. So here we go then, I've been offered that opportunity, £190 per week, 2k in a transfer budget, the wage budget is 2.3k, we know the rest of this, I just need to achieve a mid-table finish this season and then continue to be recognised as the best of the rest, so let's start those negotiations, let's see if we can get £200 a week out of them, go on, they've accepted that, £200 per week, I will take that, a percentage of club compensation required for my GRO, so 90% should anything happen there, and here we go, as we flash forward, I'm in the boardroom of Druids, and I have been hired, so Druids have today confirmed the appointment of Prey Bocelli as the club's manager, and I'm happy to be there, look at that smiley face, here we go, so Des Williams and the chairperson would, would like to congratulate me and welcome me to the club, so the year founded was 1992, so they're basically just about 20 year old, and Connors Key are my fierce rivals, so there we go then, so maybe we won't be jumping to Connors Key should they become available. Reputation-wise, is half a star, similar to myself, and the immediate prediction is a 12th place finish. Club history-wise, the Asians have a history that they can be proud of, having won 19 competitions. When was the last time they won any silverware? 2014, they won the Welsh Cup, so fair enough, right? So that's one to watch then. As you can see there, we won the North East Wales Football Association Cup in 2019. Nothing really to write home about, but any silverware is good silverware, I suppose. When we look at my team report, my best 11 then, we've got Jones in goal, Edge, Ferreira, Lever, Bao, Lockett and Vieira, with Foe, Flint, Agumang and Roberto. So let's have a look at some of these players then. So Roberto, my striker, what is he about? When we look at him, heading 12, dribbling 13, finishing 9. Okay, he's a three-star player, 30-year-old Canadian. What about Vieira? Is he Patrick Vieira? No, it's not. It's Pavel Vieira. Close enough, as Pavel welcomes me to the club. As you can see, first touch, 11, technique, 11. But an advanced playmaker role is currently four and a half stars, so he's a quality player. I've got players out on loan. Nobody in with us at the minute, though, which is good. And again, when we look at this club vision, we know the drill there. Let's go. Let's get into the club. So here we go then. We've got our first managerial job. Absolutely massive. And we're in at Wales. We've got lots going on. Let's just have a look at the squad first of all. And so looking at this squad depth, they're expecting the 4-4-2. Aggie Mang up front is apparently the best striker at the club. Finishing his five. Composure is nine. Wowzers. Current ability though, for these attributes, current ability is three half star. Have I got my work cut out? It is 23 year old and he's Italian. There we go, he might have a little bit of flair about him. When we look at his history, he's not really done a lot. In 32 appearances, over his long career, let's be honest. Seven, eight years in now, he's only scored six goals. That worries me. And he scored six goals back in 2019. He hasn't scored anything since then. Nothing worth writing about. Pavel Vieira, we've already looked at. Yolari Bayao, another player that's in. Portuguese and Guinea as well. 26-year-old. Head and mark and tackling. He's not bad. For this level, he's not bad. You know, I'm not expecting to see players with 20. He's bravery 16. He's not scared to get stuck in. Aggression-wise, 15. He'll definitely leave a foot out. But current ability, four and a half star potential ability. This team, is it horrific? No. Do I need to find a formation that'll fit in? Jacob Lever is my best defender. You know, what am I looking at here? When we look at those finances, I've got £1,750 to play with. I am getting 100% of transfer revenue, though. What about debt and loans? Zero. Buzzing. So I haven't got to worry about any debt. In the development centre, I've got nothing. Absolutely nothing or no players worth pushing to the first team. But I have got a strong under-19 squad when we have a look at them. Hudson Parry, young goalkeeper. Probably better than the goalkeeper I've already got, who we've already had a look at. Could, I'm just, in fairness, I am going to promote him to the senior squad. I could do with that option in there as well. Liam Buckley, a defensive right player. Let's move him up to the senior squad as well. Current ability, one and a half stars. Whilst not ideal, you know, let's just get him integrated into the squad. Because the squad 
it's not the biggest squad depth that I've ever seen. You know, normally you're having to scroll down, but they've got a light team here. When we're looking at ability, we've got got a five-star player ability. Pavel Vieira in there as well. What about wages? Who's my sterner? But yeah, he's there with £300 a week. And he's the only player at the club who's actually worth any money. So if I'm going to move anybody out, I'm not going to generate any funds. Which I suppose isn't a bad thing. Because it means I'll be buying players on free transfers anyway, should I need to. But what I will say is there's not too many Welsh players at the club. As it stands, we've got five Welsh players in there. More English players in there than Welsh. So might say a little bit about the talent around the area, I suppose. But we will try to bring some more Welsh players in. Looking at the squad dynamics then, Team Cohesion is abysmal, club atmosphere is average and so is my geo support. Top influencers wise then, anybody opposes, no that's great. I've got no team leaders though, even my captain is only highly influential. 7 player supporters, 19 players have no real opinion of us. So there we go. So, got lots of work to do before the start of the season. When we look at the schedule then, we start off with games against Carnarvon, TNS, Haverford West, Barry, and Newtown. So they're my first five games coming up. We have got three friendlies coming up. A game against my second 11, Wrexham and Corwin Bay as well. So what we're going to do then, guys, I'm going to end the episode here. We've been introduced to the squad. We are at the Druids. We are in the Welsh Premier League as well, which is a great place to start the challenge. So yeah, that's the end of the first episode. We've got lots to do in this transfer window to try and bring the squad up to scratch. But if you have liked the episode, please give it a thumbs up. would mean a lot. And if you are new to the channel, like I say, please like and subscribe. And if you're a regular subscriber and a regular viewer, thank you very much for watching. But yes, stay safe and I'll catch you later. Tara. <laughs>